welcome to this week's charity focus. Now, the one that we are focusing on today is the YMCA Open Door Project, and joining me now is Rachel Taylor. Rachel, thank you so much for being here today. I'm really excited to speak about the YMCA Open Door because I know about the fantastic things that you do. So before we start, just give everyone a little bit of a background on what it is you do within the project. Okay, well, I'm the uh, Supported Lodgings Manager. Mm -hmm. um, and what the project does is when uh, people, when young people, 16 and 17 year olds, are referred to the YMCA for accommodation, rather than placing them in one of our hostels, we place them with a host family in the community. Okay, so regarding the YMCA Open Door, just tell us a little bit more about how it started and the effect that it has on youth homelessness within the community. Okay, well it was set up because when young people were being referred and placed in our hostel, we realised that they actually needed more support. Um, we, we feel that the best place for a young person is usually with their own family, but mm -hmm. when for whatever reason that can't happen, um, we felt it was better for them to be with another family um, in a more normal setting than, than, than in a hostel sort of environment. Mm -hmm. um, so we recruit families across the black country and, and we place 16 and 17 year olds with them in their spare room. Fantastic. So how does the YMCA Open Door project work in terms of placing the youth with families? Do the families sort of um, reach out to you or do you have to recruit them? Do young people sort of ask where they want to live? How does that whole it, it, it's a bit of both. I mean, young people sometimes have very specific ideas about yes. the areas they want to live in. <laughs> um, we have to remind them sometimes that it's not an estate agent. But, yeah. but we have hosts right across the black country now. We have almost 100. Um, at the moment, we have about 70 or 80 young people placed, but we're, we're desperately looking for new hosts so we can mm -hmm. um, accommodate uh, young people close to the places where they go to college and close yeah. to their family and friends if, if need be as well. And how does that recruitment process work? How do you choose who you're going going to have on the Open Door project. Well, as a project, we really value life experience. So we're not looking for any specific qualifications or mm -hmm. anything like that. The process is, is relatively short. They have to have a DBS check. Um, they also uh, have to uh, go through a, a sort of training process. So, so uh, we have a, a preparation course. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not teaching them how to look after teenagers because we assume that they're probably quite capable of doing that. Yeah. It's more around preparing them, um, getting them familiar with all our uh, policies and procedures so they know mm -hmm. exactly what to do, what to expect. Um, and what to do, you know, if, if the young person, for example, doesn't come home, yeah. um, how they, they need to report it, etc. That sort of and thing. And how long does that training take from when you first apply to actually having a young person enter your home? The whole process takes approximately two months. Okay. So we, we run the course over four sessions, or, or sometimes we do it over two long day sessions instead. Um, and we do those sort of in all four parts of the black country in sort of Dudley, Wolverhampton, Sandwell, mm -hmm. and Warsaw. And um, yeah, we, we, we do them yeah, normally over the four sessions. Okay, and what are the incentives for sort of families to come forward and open their spare rooms that maybe are going to waste um, for some someone off the street to come in and be able to use. It, it's not a project that, that people would ever sort of get rich on, but they do get paid for, for having somebody in their spare room. Mm -hmm. um, it, it doesn't, it's not a fortune. It works out at just over £100 a week, so they certainly shouldn't be out of pocket. But really, the sort of people that we're trying to attract are people who want to really make a difference, make a difference in their difference, community. Yeah. And the feedback that we have from our hosts is really positive, and the feedback from the young people as well. Do you have some favourite stories? What have, what have been sort of your biggest turnarounds that you've seen a young person and come in and they've been placed with a family and you know they've just clicked something's happened and they've been able to continue with their life and maybe go back to before things got bad. Yeah, well, we, we've had some some really really positive stories. Quite too, too many to mention in a way, but we certainly had um, quite a few young people that have gone from our project gone on to university. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Which I mean, that's almost unheard of in supported housing, yeah. and, and we literally are in double figures the number of young people who've managed to continue with their studying while mm -hmm. they've they've stayed with the host. Um, but we've, th there's been many stories where people have really just lost their way, and then yes. just kind of having that continuity. There's one lad in particular, um, he, he was placed with us and um, he was finding it very hard to stick to the boundaries that the host gave him and, right. and it, mm -hmm. it got to the point where we were actually on, on the verge
verge of saying, you know, that we, we didn't feel we could help him anymore. Yes. Um, but he, he did turn it round and with the kind of support of his host, it, it's been wonderful. And I mean, they've, they've sort of really clicked. They, it, it's lovely to see them together. You know, they, they kind of really do treat him as part of the family. Mm -hmm. um, he's been on holiday with them, you oh, know. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's really lovely. So the boundaries that you talk about, I'm sure there's plenty of people that might be interested in wanting to do it but need to know a bit more information. What are the boundaries that the hosts have in terms of the times? I know you have certain times that the young people are allowed to come into the house and then times they have to leave by, things like that. Yeah, it's more really around professional boundaries, I, mm -hmm. I, I guess. The, the hosts, we, we kind of always say to the host, it's your house and it's your rules. So as long as the young person is engaged um, in college and, and able to get up in the mornings, if, if they are a young person that stays out late at night, if as a host that doesn't pose a problem for you, mm -hmm. um, we, we wouldn't argue with that. But you know, most young people, if they're going to get up for college the next day, they need to be back yeah. reasonably early. So we would encourage yeah. you to do that. But it's at the same time, it's been realistic in realizing that there are times when teenagers, you know, at weekends want to stay out. <laughs> absolutely, they, they do. You know, I mean, yeah. we, you know, we were teenagers ourselves, and we know what what they they do. Yeah. So um, yeah, it, it's it's about kind of having um, hosts who who understand that, who get young people, mm -hmm. you know, who really kind of understand mm -hmm. the, what, what it's like to be a teenager, I guess. Absolutely. Now, I know last time I spoke to you, you were in the middle of a campaign to get 25 new hosts on yeah. the agenda yeah. and absolutely smashed that target. Congratulations. Thank you. You're looking for new hosts again now. Yes. Any, anything any campaigns happening, any amount of people that you need to step up and, and offer their spare rooms? Well, we, we haven't set ourselves a specific target, but we, we are desperately looking for, for more people. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we have at times had to turn young, young people away because we haven't got hosts for them. Right. Um, we particularly need people who can do short-term placements as well as long-term. So we have a service called Emergency Night Stop. Right. And that literally is what it says on the tin. It's, it's, it's when it's people just, are on the street and... Yeah, yeah, yeah but potentially they may be on the street or, or they yeah. perhaps have been sofa surfing or, or, or it, you know, they could end up on the street if they didn't find a safe place. It's a very short notice. It yeah. is, yeah. They literally come in on the day, they need somewhere that night to stay. Right. Um, and rather than sending them to a B&B, where again, because of their vulnerability, you know, they're, they're, they're kind of really, it's, it's a high risk thing for them. Yes. So we'd much rather put them with a safe host. They in need the security and stability and reassurance. Absolutely, and yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so we're looking for people, not necessarily that, that can do long term, although we do need that as well. Mm -hmm. But, but um, yeah, sometimes um, I think people are reluctant to come forward because they think, oh, I, I, I don't want to commit to two years because I've perhaps got my own child that comes yes. home from university in the summer or have family come and stay um, if the, if you just tell us well we're available for this period of time that's great as well so so we'd really take advantage of that that's fantastic Rachel best of luck Thank with you. everything I hope and if you do want to get in touch with the YMCA open door project we've got some information on the bottom of the screen now so you can visit those and uh, thank you very much Rachel thank you Natalie cheers thank you